Hello everyone, I'm Wonbom Lee from Seoul National University. And today, I'm going to talk about our work in Finigen, efficient generative inference of large language models with dynamic KV cache management. This work was done with my colleagues, Jun Gil Lee, Cheong Wan -so, and Professor Jeong Shim. So this is the outline of today's talk. First, I'll explain the LM inference and the KV cache problem and talk about the prior approaches to reduce the size of key value cache and their limitations. Then, I'll introduce Infinigen, a dynamic KV cache management framework which includes two key components, speculative key value prefetching and a key query skewing. Finally, I'll show the evaluation results and conclude my talk. So large language models have opened a new era across a wide range of real-world applications. And now, LLMs become more powerful by increasing the maximum number of tokens. For example, GPT and GPT-4 were only capable of processing limited number of tokens. In contrast, recent LLMs like Cloud and Gemini even process millions of tokens. With the extended sequence length, Models now handle millions of words, kilolines of codes, and hours of video and audio. However, when it comes to serving LM inference with such a long context, the key challenge is the large memory footprint of the key value cache. So let's take a look how LM inference is performed. Basically, LMs are composed of a stack of transformer blocks, which includes attention layer and feed for network. When the input sequence is given, LM first summarize the context and generate new output token in the prefill stage. At the same time, LM store the transient states like keys and values of the input tokens to memoize the context. And we call this key value cache. Using the output token, LMs run the decoding stage to generate the next token autoregressively. The key value cache also keeps updated with the key and value of the newly generated tokens. So one key thing to note is that the size of key value cache linearly scales with the sequence length. Here's the size of key value cache and model weights across sequence lengths. The size of key value cache easily exceeds the model weight and even surpasses the GPU memory capacity for long sequences. So there were several approaches to reduce the key value cache size. The first is quantization that compressed the key value cache by converting each element into a low bit data format. Another approach is eviction-based approach that reduced the number of key value tokens. Some recent works propose to analyze the importance of each token and permanently eliminate less important tokens to keep the key value cache size in check. However, both of these approaches have their limitations. First, quantization does not serve as a fundamental solution since the key value cache access still linearly grows with the sequence length. Here's the key value cache size across sequence lengths. After quantizing from floating point 16 to integer 4, the size is reduced, but it still grows with the sequence lengths. Also, on the other end, eviction-based approach assumes persistence of attention pattern. It means that if a token is considered less important at some point, it is expected to remain non-critical for the subsequent token generation. However, that is not the case. Attention pattern changes dynamically. For example, we show attention weight of sampled key across iterations. We show the last 16K iterations out of the 1 million tokens and if the attention weight is low, the token is considered less important. So there is a phase that the token is important and less important. Even if the token is unimportant at some point, it can, it can suddenly become important at any time. So the permanent elimination of these kind of tokens can lead to an accursed drop due to the missing essential token. On the other end, eviction-based approach also uses a fixed key value cache size budget across layers and queries. Let's assume the budget is three. 
But this fixed budget can lead to a subpar performance since the, since the number of important tokens changes dynamically across layers and queries. So let's assume they are two and four. First, if it accesses more than essential, the memory bandwidth is wasted for accessing ineffective tokens. On the other hand, if it accesses less than essential, the curse drop can happen due to the missing essential tokens. So as we saw, reducing the key value cache with quantization or eviction have the, has a lot of problems. So prior approaches are not a scalable nor effective solutions in an era of millions of tokens. Now I'll introduce Infinigen. We propose a totally different direction to manage the key value cache. And it is to exploit the abundant CPU memory to maintain the KV cache. So instead of struggling to store the key value cache in GPU memory, we can offload the key value cache to CPU memory, which is relatively cheaper and larger. In this way, we can enable longer sequences, for example, millions of tokens. However, a key challenge is that we need to transfer the key value cache from CPU to GPU for attention computation. And this data transfer leads to a significant slowdown due to the limited PCI bandwidth. On the graph, the data transfer is a major performance bottleneck of KV cache offloading scenario, and it leads to a 19 times lower inference. So to mitigate the data transfer overhead, we take two approaches transfer less and transfer only. In detail, we load and compute with only a few important tokens instead of bringing the entire KV cache. Also, we prefetch the essential tokens from the key value cache in the preceding layer to overlap the data transfer and the computation. Here's how it works. In each layer, we predict the essential tokens and prefetch the corresponding key value cache for the next layer. In this way, first the data transfer overhead becomes significantly small since we only send the essential tokens. Also, we can overlap the data transfer and the computation of the preceding layer. Additionally, the attention computation of the next layer becomes significantly light due to the reduced number of tokens. Well, that's all great. But the question is, how to predict the important tokens for the next layer? This is very challenging because we did not even start the computation of the preceding layer. Well, our solution is to perform a minimal rehearsal of attention computation for layer i at layer i minus one. On the left side, we show the original tension computation at layer i, and on the right side, we show the minimal rehearsal at layer i minus one. Well, they look quite similar, but there are two key differences. First, we use the tension input of the preceding layer to predict the essential tokens for the next layer. Second, we use the partial query weight and partial key cache of layer i to predict to predict the essential tokens. And in each of the matrices, darker elements have greater magnitude. So first, we can use the input of preceding layer for the prediction because the inputs of two consecutive layers are highly similar. On the left bottom, we show the visualization of the input similarity. The input of current layer is the sum of the input, attention output, and FFN output of the preceding layer. And three arrows show each of the components. One thing to note is that the input is much larger than others. This is because attention and FFN intakes the input after layer normalization that significantly reduces the magnitude. So the input of current layer is highly dependent on the input of preceding layer. We also measure the cosine similarity between the attention input of current layer and other components. As we expected, the input of, input of the preceding layer show high similarity with the current input, while others don't. 
So we can use the input of preceding layer to predict the essential tokens for the next layer. Then we multiply the attention input with only a few columns of query weight to reduce the overhead of prediction. We use the columns that generate large magnitude elements in the query. Since these elements have great impact on the dot product between query and key, we can properly approximate the attention computation with these elements. Then we multiply the partial query and partial key cache to generate the speculated attention score. Using the score, we select those tokens with attention score larger than the threshold. In this way, Infinigen selects only essential amount of tokens instead of fixed amount of it. Furthermore, we can make the prediction more effective by emphasizing the elements in the partial query. To do so, we propose skewing. And here's how it works. Um, we show the query and key before the skewing. And we use two elements of query and key as a partial query and partial key. If we compute the dot product between query and key, the difference between attention scores of full computation and the partial computation is nine. On the other hand, if you apply skewing, certain elements are more emphasized. And now, if we compute the attention score, the difference is only one. This is because the elements of partial query and partial key now have greater impact on the dot product between query and key after the screen. Also, our screen method does not change the full computation results, which is 33 in this example. So how we do that? Um, first, we perform an offline modification of mod query and key weight using singular value decomposition. Our, our offline modification is an offline post process and we only apply to the model weights instead of runtime process that is ap applied to the query and key tensors. Also, our screen, screen method generates the identical computation results of attention layer. Since we multiply the same orthogonal matrix both, to both query weight and key weight, they are canceled when we multiply the query and key. So for more details about skewing, please check with our paper. Now I'll show the evaluation results. This is the experimental setup. On the, right, on the, left, on, on the right side, we show the system configuration and we use OPT and LAMA2 model for the evaluation. The baselines are the KV cache management methods on CUDA UVM and FlexGen. FlexGen is a modern offloading-based LM inference system, and H2 is a recent eviction-based approach. So first, I'll show the performance. The x-axis is the baselines and the infinigen, and y-axis is the inference latency. Infinigen greatly improves the overall performance, and it achieves 2 to 33x speed up over the baselines. This speedup comes from the significantly reduced number of tokens to load with our speculative prefetching. Next, I'll show the speed of over flexion across sequence lengths. While the int for quantization and H2 leads to a saturating speedup, Infinigen improves the performance with longer sequences. This is because Infinigen, Infinigen captures the dynamically changing attention pattern and load only the necessary amount of tokens. In the meantime, um, Infinigen shows better model accuracy than the prior solutions. And here's the accuracy comparison. The x-axis is the relative KVK size involved in the attention computation, and the y-axis is the accuracy. The black line shows the accuracy of using full KV cache. So if we uh, while the quantization and H2O leads to a huge occurs drop, Infinigen offers substantially better model accuracy even for small relative KV cache size. We observe similar results in different data sets and models. This is because Infinigen maintains the KV cache pool and selectively load a few of them instead of complete eviction of less important ones. 
We discuss more results such as scalability of longer sequences in our paper. We present a projection on how Infinigen would benefit in an era of millions of tokens. So please check with our paper for more details. To conclude, we address the problem of key value cache size in LM inference. Our solution is Infinigen, a dynamic KV cache management framework. With the speculat by speculatively prefetching only essential tokens with the support of screen, Infinigen shows three times faster performance while preserving the model accuracy. Also, it shows a better, better scalability than the prior solutions. And this is the end of my talk, and thank you for listening. I'd be happy to take questions.